Hello Libra and welcome to your monthly horoscope for November for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you the broad overview, the broad strands to look out for, but please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail all the key influences particularly relevant to your sign. Now, of course, your ruler is Venus, and Venus forges a beautiful alliance to the Sun through the first 10 days, but also it's in touch with Mercury for much of this month. And in fact, on the 23rd, they come into exact conjunction in the sign of Sagittarius. And this is because they move mid-month into your third house. So the first half of this month is going to be very much about issues to do with your self-worth, to do with your everyday budgeting. And of course, we have that lunar eclipse, which occurs on the 8th, which is a massive event. And it is going to be bringing that square, that attritional square between Saturn and Uranus into the mix in a very potent way. So I need to go through that for you. But Jupiter, the planet of growth, does go direct on the 23rd as well. You've also got Mars. Although it's in retrograde, it's in your sister air sign of uh, Gemini, and it's in a very adventurous part of your situation. It's being squared by Neptune like it was last month. Just need to go through that with you as well. So, so much to share and a month which is going to see a big gear shift right in the middle. However, if you would like to ascend above this zodiac broadcast and understand how serious astrology can guide you in year 2023, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data of time, date and place of birth, I can give you your year 2023 forecast, plus if you order this year, you'll get the rest of this year free. And in my special package of 30% off, you can also get your personal roadmap. This is your character analysis. This will help you to understand some of the repetitive patterns that have occurred in your life, but also how you can work with these going forwards in a more effective way, particularly the challenging ones, but embrace your talents more fully. Please see the link below for more. If you're new to my channel, I'd be honored if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. If you're an ongoing viewer, thank you so much for all your support. It's really appreciated. So Libra, as you come into November, the Sun and Venus, your ruler, are aligned through the first 10 days very closely, but also Mercury, the planet of communication, quick wits and of commerce are all in the passionate sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is, of course, very much about conviction, intensity, but the combination of the Sun and Venus together could give you quite a, a boost when it comes to your appreciation of the good things in life. Now, you have a great sense of style, fashion and presentation anyway, but it's possible that you will be tempted by something or someone through this first third of the month. But also, like us all, you'll probably be grappling with your costs and how you can budget things more effectively. And I do feel that when the Sun and Mercury come into an exact conjunction on the back of that total lunar eclipse, this gives you the chance to think very crisply and very shrewdly about what to do. But that side of you that does like to have the odd treat is certainly to the fore early in the month. But then again, if you're someone who really appreciates home cooked food or making things, I feel that the second house energy, which although for you is Scorpio, essentially is the kind of energy of Taurus, it's very sensual. So the things that you enjoy can be the things that uh, are pleasurable. And of course, your enjoyment and your pleasures may be different to another Libran person. So they will be completely unique to you. If you are fortunate enough to be in a relationship which you know, the intimacy side of things is important to you. Things could get hotter at the start of this month. But equally, if you're in a relationship where your uh, personal values or your approach to expenditure is very different to a partner's, 
all this can come up to the boil on the back of that total lunar eclipse of the 8th. And because Saturn is squaring up to the Sun in week 2 of this month, it means that the Sun and Mercury join in with that really tough right angle between Uranus and Saturn that has been going on for the last two years. Now for you, Saturn's been in your fifth house, which isn't really uh, a barrel of laughs, but it's much better than being in the fourth house where it was before, of course, with Pluto, which continues to be your bête noire. And uh, Pluto actually, I should say, does forge a very constructive link this month with Jupiter, the planet of growth, despite its retrograde through to the 23rd. So some of the changes or the emotional understanding that you've been garnering over recent years with the help of Pluto, even if it has seemed to have been a brutal process, compared to Saturn being in the fifth house, I think you will agree that that fourth, fourth house journey has really been challenging. So Saturn in the fifth house has just been asking you, has just been asking you to work at your talents and your uh, creative flair in a very patient and persistent way, but also around a romantic situation, there may have been some tense moments over the last couple of years because Uranus is in the part of your situation that's very much more to do with devotion, but also those longer term finances. So expenditure or different values may have been uh, something that has caused some clashes. And that all can really seem to come very much more sharply into focus on the back of this uh, total lunar eclipse. So how do you deal with this? I think in just a practical sense, we're all trying to find ways that we can minimize our costs and maximize what we get for our money. So in other words, value for money. But I don't think this is just going to be about the cost of your electricity or your shopping bill. I feel that this is your values around relationships as well. And that's something that Pluto has given uh, us Librans, me with my ascendant, uh, massive lessons about in recent years. It's been very much about setting boundaries. Being a giver, being attentive to other people's needs has not always been good because it has meant at times losing a sense of our personal identity. So I think in this particular relationship, it's not giving up on some of those hard earned gains even if someone in some way is trying to work something out which sees uh, some kind of pushback. If it's something that's really important to you because of the fixed energy involved in this particular event, do be stubborn. If it's really important to you, stand your ground. Now also, Mars in that very adventurous ninth house is pushing you to be more daring in terms of travel, widening your horizons, higher education, even being more physically active. But there is a warning because Neptune can be a very draining influence. And even if you're wanting to be uh, more conscientious about your physical vitality, your exercise and so on, there's only a certain amount of energy in the tank and Neptune can be very draining to Mars. So even if you do try to do some different things, your responsibilities and obligations could make it difficult to do exactly what you want. And even if you do try to be more virtuous, don't overdo things because you could end up feeling quite wary. So basically this event is playing into the wider circumstances we're all dealing with. But for you, I think it's much more around personal relationships. But then on the 16th, your ruler moves into Sagittarius, joined by Mercury on the 17th, the Sun on the 22nd. On the 23rd, the ruler of Sagittarius, Jupiter, goes direct. But also, there is that glorious new moon. And your mode of communicating just will absolutely sparkle in the second half of this month. You can be a very effective communicator at the best of times, but I just feel that you're going to have an extra dimension, particularly on the back of the new moon, because Venus and Mercury are exactly conjunct on that day. So that gives you a boost in the following month. This can see you uh, being uh, 
very much in demand when it comes to invitations, uh, maybe uh, to meet up in your local community world, or perhaps it's uh, uh, interacting around films or music or any cultural event that's exciting and stimulating. I really feel that after all the challenges over recent years, the second half of this month does give you a platform to really be much more playful. But of course, this will be in, uh, in relation to a turbulent backdrop in the world in general. But if there are opportunities for levity and joyfulness and sharing the opportunity to mix and mingle safely, then I think you're going to be very much head of the queue. You could also see some revival around some relationships maybe an ease in attention with someone in your locality that has been a bit of a challenge, a neighbour perhaps, that you're not quite so comfortable with or haven't been in the past. Or is there a sibling that's going to warm up a little bit after a period of iciness? All that's possible, but I think the total lunar eclipse is saying don't give away those hard-earned gains in terms of understanding what your minimum points is when it comes to the exchange of anything, whether it's time, affection, interest, knowledge, money, whoever you're interacting with, whoever the transaction is, stay single-minded about what your core values are. Mm -hmm.